Okay, the next chapter in, that we are going to be covering is radiographic and fluoroscopic equipment from your book. Uh, it has a lot of detail in it, so make sure that you do read um, so that you're able to answer all the objectives that are listed here. Uh, there's some really important stuff. There's also some information that we'll be covering further uh, in your program and going deeper into it. So this is just an overview of what we're going to be covering uh, to come, but it's good that you have a foundation moving forward. So you have a lot of objectives here. Make sure you go through them. So the first thing they talk about is your diagnostic yield. The diagnostic yield is the amount of clinically useful information on a diagnostic image. So the goal is to have the highest diagnostic yield that we can get. So um, difference in medical imaging modalities, uh, we have radiography, which is really good for bones. We can see tough, soft tissues also, any kind of calcifications. We can see some pathologies. Sonography is really good for cysts versus solid lesions. It's really good for uh, vascular. Um, it's great for scanning uh, pregnant women, uh, the babies in utero. It has a lot of really, uh, a lot of strengths that are not listed here, clearly. So CT is really good in that we can take axial slices of the body and put them in various planes. Uh, we can do 3D imaging. We can do MIPS and NPRs, and we can see the body in multiple planes. So it takes a 2D image and makes it into a 3D image, which is really, really useful. So the limitations of radiography is that we only see in 2D. So CT has low contrast resolution, and it has great tissue differentiation. So MRI is great for anything, really. So um, we're not good for acute stroke, but other than that, uh, MRI scanning's come a long way and it's only scratching the surface of its abilities in uh, the future. So it's good for inflammatory processes, yes. Distinguish between subtle differences and tissue differences. That's where its, its strength is. We can also target different um, elements within the body so that we can see the characteristics of a tumor, let's just say. So really, really sensitive. It's great. Nuclear medicine is great for looking at the uh, metabolism of the body, so anything that's metabolic. So we can inject a, we can inject, ingest, um, inhale a isotope, and it can go to the body that's targeted, and we can see how the metabolic structure is of that. So each modality has its considerations for the doctors when they're ordering. So they need to take a look at the pathology of the patient, if the patient's able to tolerate the exam, is the patient able to have the radiation. Um, so there's a lot that goes into the consideration in ordering a procedure, and it's our job as technologists to be the gatekeeper of that. Some residents or some doctors don't know about new, new technologies and new advancements. So we are able to guide them and say, hey, did you know that there's this, this, and this that we can do instead? So a lot of times we'll go to the radiologist and they'll make the phone call, which is great. So um, physicians are expected, expect a certain amount of diagnostic yield when exams are ordered. So they're, they expect to be able to see um, what pathologies or um, complications the patient has or that they're presenting in their office. So the diagnostic yield of information must outweigh the input factors of the procedure. Really important that you are going to get the results that you need for that patient because especially with radiation, um, there's, there's risk with it. So we need to make sure that it's safe for the patient and that it's going to give the information that is needed for the diagnosis. So we need competent imaging professionals. We strive for maximum diagnostic yield and minimum of the um, adverse um, reactions or adversity to diagnostic radiology. So um, the accuracy of the diagnostic information on a medical image is this diagnostic um, efficacy. So any extraneous information on an image that does not reflect the patient's true medical condition distracts from the diagnostic um, efficacy. So diagnostic efficacy and diagnostic yield must be optimized as a standard of care. And when we purchase equipment, we look at this. So x-ray tube and x-ray tube support systems. Um, there's collimator assemblies, there's radiographic table, there's x-ray generators and controls and upright image receptors within a, an x-ray room. And 
the tube design. So when we look at an x-ray tube, and we've covered this prior, but we're going to cover it again. So the tube is a plexiglass vacuum. So within that plexiglass vacuum, we have the cathode assembly and the anode assembly. So we have the negative and the positive side. So cathode is the negative side, anode is the positive side. So within that, we have the, on the cathode side, we have the filament, we have the small and large filament. And that is going to boil off electrons and shoot them across to the anode when we apply um, electricity to it. So the anode is a tungsten anode. Um, it's a tungsten rhenium typically track. And the tungsten is for the high heat. The rhenium is for the expansion and contraction due to that heat. Then we have the molybdenum base coming back. And we have bearings and a stator. And we use magnetic induction to spin that anode. So outside the x-ray tube, there is um, a box, and it's a lead-lined tube housing. So the way this is worded, it says tube inside the lead-lined housing, tube housing. So kind of confusing how that's written. So you have your x-ray tube, which is your vacuum plexic, um, pyrex glass, and then on the outside of that is your lead-lined tubed housing, and that's to absorb um, scatter radiation. So the x-ray tube produces... Uh, Radiation, when high energy electricity passes through it, so um, the x-ray uh, radiation exits the tube through a window in the housing and is directed towards the patient. So the window in the housing is, here's the window in the tube and then there's a window in the housing in addition. So then there's the collimator assembly, which is right here, and it controls the size and shape of the x-ray field directed towards the patient. So it projects a high intensity light Field on the patient represents the area of the field. So when you adjust your collimator, it has a light and a mirror, and then you have your lead shutters. So your lead shutters are going to block the light just as it does with the x-rays. So wherever your light is represented is where your x-ray field should be. Now, as you know, there's some of them are off by a little bit, so you need to know um, how much is it off and which way is it off when you're making your exposure. So that you don't clip any pertinent anatomy. All right, so um, there may be a manual, which are these knobs, so you're gonna control here. And there's also um, an automatic, so positive beam limitation, so PBL. And usually you'll see a key right up in here. We have it in the floor room. Um, you'll see it a lot um, in other equipment. This one does not have one. But we turn the key in whatever size cassettes within the, um, image um, in the bucky tray, it'll sense that and it'll open up to the field. You can collimate smaller, but you can't collimate bigger. So they used to be required by law and they've taken that out. So your radiographic table must um, be, so maybe fixed height or variable height. So some of you guys see that your floor tables are not able to adjust down, but your basic x-ray table does raise and lower, which is really nice. Uh, we have the floating tabletop, which is a four-way floating tabletop. Usually in fluoro, it's not a variable height table, so it's a fixed height, and it has buttons to move the table in the four directions. So the table type is tabletop is highly radiolucent. It's usually carbon fiber, and so it doesn't scratch easily. Some of the table's designs permit a variable speed uh, tilting capability. Uh, they pretty much have eliminated that and it's one speed. So tilting radiographic tables. So here, this is a floral table. You can see the image intensifier here and you have a footboard here. These designs will tilt the table for horizontal to a vertical position and to trend Dellenberg. So it'll go trend Dellenberg about 15 degrees. Um, it can go 45, it can go 90. So I've, I've usually only worked on 15 degree trend Ellenberg, which means head down. And then um, it goes to a full 90 to a full upright position. So um, let's see, these tables typically do not have variable height capacities. Yes, we know that. So they don't raise and lower. There's usually right here a little um, footboard that comes out that we can have the patient stand up on. If a patient's not able to get up on the table, I stand it up and have them step up onto this footboard and then I lay it down flat. So that's another way to get the patients up onto the table. 
So here's your detachable footboard. There's also shoulder harnesses that can clip on and there's little hand helds here that clip onto the table. When you're doing floor, you need to make sure you take your bucky tray all the way down to the end and then there's a, a lead lined um, bucky tray cover right here. So you were gonna learn about that in floral. So you have a detachable footboard that you can take on or off and then you'll have shoulder harnesses for when you're in Trendelenburg and you'll have little handles also. So there's a bunch of different things that we can attach onto this table, which is great. So the Bucky assembly. So it consists of a receptor tray and a radiographic grid. So here is your receptor tray. Here's your Bucky tray and you put your image receptor right on it and then you have a grid that's set inside the table. So the grid osculates during the exposure to blow out any um, lead lead lines within the uh, grid. So um, we use this with film screen and uh, computed radiography. I guess we can put a digital plate in there too. I don't know why we couldn't. So this is a DR system and a lot of you guys are working on CR and DR which is great so I can explain both which is really nice and you'll understand what I'm talking about. So with a DR system, the cassettes and um, the cassette trays are taken out and it's just a, a direct digital device where you expose and it's usually a 17 by 17 and um, within that you just make your exposure and there's two different ways that it captures so there's direct and indirect all right so your generator control so your control console is the interface between the radiographer and the sophisticated electronics of the machine the console features include technique selections as well as the exposure button. So we can set our techniques on the console here. Here's our exposure button. Um, there's a main power switch so we can turn it on and off. And we can select our exposure factors, our MA, our time, our KVP, our KVP, yeah, our KVP. Um, it has an exposure button which is a two-phase button. So first phase that you push down, the first step is your um, rotor and as you start your thermionic emissions and then when you press it completely um, it applies the voltage and shoots the electrons from the cathode to the anode. So um, there's also an audio and visual display of the x-ray exposure so it's really important that you hear it and see it to know that it actually happened. Some of the, the machines are so quiet you don't hear them so you have to watch to make sure that it actually did make an exposure. All right, and then it'll give you a visible display of the exposure that you did. On a lot of your systems, when you expose, it'll only show you the mass for about 10 seconds. So it's really important that you look down and you see the mass of your exposure. All right, so your generators continued here. Most are microprocessors controlled and use our simple computer interfaces. So newer systems may integrate in a digital or a DR detector. Okay, so your exposure techniques consists of three key factors. You should already be aware of these. We have your MA, your time, and your KVP. So as you know, your MAS is your MA times time. And um, one key thing is here is your automatic exposure control. And that can be optional on your equipment. So you can set this. So when you're at your console, you can set your MA, your time, and your KVP. Sometimes you can just bypass the MA and time and just directly set your mass. So when you are selecting your AEC, you're going to select your KVP and your MA. Um, your time is going to be the variable. So you set your KVP, your MA, and your time is variable. Once it hits the optimal exposure, then it'll, it, the, it'll shut off the time. So you'll also be able to select your focal spot size. So you're going to do small or large depending on what you're shooting. And you also, there's automatically programmed uh, machines. So if you're shooting a hand, you can push on the hand and it's going to come up with a technique. So that's APR, um, automatically programmed radiography. So the general console, can, um, console permits selection of KVP, MA, exposure time, or mass may be operated in mass or timer mode, which is your, um, your photo time. And newer systems have APR, and that is where it shows a chest and you push in it, and it has a chest technique, a hand. It gives you a hand technique, which is nice but lazy. Um, and every patient's a little bit different, so you need to make sure that the APR is going to work for your patient. 
Technique selection is critical to good radiography, so we all know that. Okay, so the tube uh, supports, there's two basic designs. There's floor mounted and wall mounted, or floor mounted, ceiling mounted. <laughs> wall mounted is on the upright buckies. You'll see it's floor or ceiling with a wall mount. So, um, so it facilitates easy and efficient positioning of the x-ray tube assembly around the patient in any orientation. It's capable of various uh, motions depending on the need. Ergonomically friendly is great and aesthetically pleasing and not intimidating to patients. You don't want it to be too much and scare the patients off. So an overhead uh, tube crane and it's here, you can see it's it's up on the ceiling and it goes in all directions. So really nice. And you can see the different ones here. So tube support system come in two basics. So floor mounted, which is A, B, and D. So you can see each one is attached to the floor and then you have your ceiling mount here. Okay, so user friendly. Um, so newer tube crane designs permit selection of exposures on the tube head, which is great. So digital radiography systems may display image from the last exposure for review. So we display it on here. I haven't seen this yet, but I know it exists and I'm kind of excited for when it does come into play. Do we actually need it? Probably not because we are um, usually behind a console. When Well, we are behind a console when we take an x-ray. So um, we're kind of behind leaded glass and leaded walls to protect us. So having it on the tube head doesn't make a lot of sense, but I do see it on the DR units, the little um, portable DR units. So it'll pop up right there on the console, which is really cool. All right. So here, vertical upright bucky assembly. So there's two different ones, although they are the same. So don't be fooled here. So they're just different locking mechanisms. Um, and you can see the photo timer cells here. So you have the two outer for your chest and the center for like a lateral chest. And so use these photo cells and make sure you centered properly. You can see the little tick marks on here. So these are for the different size cassettes. And you can see also the lines on the outside and inside. So those are for your different cassette size, sizes. Okay, so image receptor technology. So. It receives remnant, not primary. Remnant radiation, well, it shouldn't be primary. <laughs> Hopefully you're x-raying something. Receives remnant radiation from patient and captures the x-ray energy for processing. It's classified as cassette-based and cassetteless systems. Um, historically, receptor was a cassette with an image intensifying screen and polyester film, so we've come a long way. Newer systems are replacing film screen with digital technology and a video monitor. So receptors, there's film screen, and so cassette systems, there's film screen and computed radiography. So there's, um, there's digital DR systems and there's direct and indirect within the digital radiography. So when we say it's digital radiography, we usually just say, oh, it's DR, but we're actually encompassing CR within the DR, it's very common to hear that. Um, CR is different than DR, and you're going to go into a class in your next semester where this really goes deep into this. So um, we are, you're definitely going to understand the difference between CR and DR, and a lot of people don't know that that are really old texts. They don't understand the difference between the two. So we're going to talk a little bit about it today. So um, there's flat plant panel technology. So DR systems use a thin film uh, transistor, so TFTs. So there's direct and indirect uh, detector technology within the DR. So the only radiation that is of clinical value is one that is absorbed by the detector. So if you expose outside the detector, it has no diagnostic value because it's not being captured by anything. So it's really, really important that you guys collimate to the detector size um, as a minimum. And you should be within the detector um, by a quarter inch all the way around. So um, it's also able to convert a radiographic image for interpretation. So depending on how efficient it is in the detail of the receptor. So there's photostimulable phosphor technology, so PSP, also known as storage 
phosphor technology, commonly referred to as CR, um, uses reusable image plates coated with barium uh, fluorohyalite crystals, creates an electron trap in the phosphor. So the electrons get excited and they go to this higher state and they get trapped in these electron traps. The depth of the electron trap um, automatically is directly related to the X-ray energy that is created in the trap. So cassettes with imaging plates come in various sizes. So the smaller the size, the higher resolution you're going to have. So that's important to know. So like I said, these PSP CR plates, we're going to go deep into them in your next semester. So with your PSP technology, the latent image consists of electron traps on a plate. The plate is housed in a light tight cassette. The cassette with the plate is inserted into a CR reader. The CR reader opens the cassettes and scans the plate with low energy laser beam. Electron traps excited by the laser energy release their energy as light. The light emitted from the electron traps is captured by a light waveguide assembly and converted to an elect electrical signal. Then this electrical signal is an analog signal. This analog signal is converted to a digital signal by an analog digital converter we call A and D converter. The digital signal is analyzed by the software to create the finished image. So it goes through several steps in order to uh, display an image. So that's why it takes so long. Okay, so the CR plate has been scanned by the laser beam. After it's done, it takes really bright white light. And what that does is it takes all those um, electrons and drops them down to their normal state. So a clean plate is reinserted into the set and reused and ejected from the reader. So and is ready for to be used and put back into the reader. Um, put back into the cassette from the reader. Jeez. So CR imaging plates can be used thousands of exposures per plate. So um, every once in a while they'll get a bad um, spot on them. So we'll take them out of out of use. Okay. Important CR considerations. CR plates are extra sensitive to low energy radiation after they've been exposed. So we used to, with film, when we're doing like a barium enema or an upper GI, we'd stack all of our unexposed uh, film cassettes um, upright, and then we'd take an image and we'd put the exposed one face down on the counter in the room because they weren't sensitive to scatter radiation. Well, these guys, these uh, PSP plates are very sensitive to uh, radiation and they will fog really easy. So you have to be careful with these. Also, these electron traps um, do not like any kind of delay. So the electron traps can dissolve with lengthy uh, delays in processing in the reader. So there is a resolution differences among cassette sizes also. So if we wait in running our CR plates, if we wait 10 minutes or more, we start losing um, image quality. Is that crazy? All right, so DR technology. So replacing cassette-based systems is also known as a flat panel detector, so FPD, and it has improved spatial resolution, which is great. So they're more dose efficient. Detectors are expensive and must be treated with care. They are so expensive. So they're going to drop in price as technology advances. So it's really important to keep that in mind. And using radiographic grids are very, very important. Um, they're very sensitive to scatter radiation. So a lot of times when you guys are shooting DR, you're not using a grid. You still need to use a grid more so than you did with CR plates. All right, so there's new imaging technologies coming out with um, DR technology. So tomosynthesis is one. Uh, we used to do tomosynthesis 20 years ago for IVPs. Um, it was a 2D image. Now the tomosynthesis is considered a 3D technology, and it's very, very cool. Fluoro. Okay, so fluoroscopy provides live real-time images of patients using x-rays. So standard of care for studying patients um, with physiologic and dynamic using radiation um, requires special equipment designed um, features of an x-ray tube with an image receptor in a perpendicular relationship. It's used for a wide variety of diagnostic procedures. 
It's capable of also taking spa images, which are static images, as well as live floral, so they can do both. And the table can stand up, as we talked about before, and spot film device with image intensifiers at right angles to the x-ray tube during floro, and the table side controls of the tabletop motion. So um, you have on the tower, this is your II image intensifier, you can control the table, and on the table you can control the table, which is pretty cool. You usually have a ceiling mounted, well, most of the time you have a ceiling mounted tube. So just like in our our X-ray, our RNF, RNF stands for radiography and fluoro. So we have radiography and we have fluoro. So there's two tubes within this room. There's a tube in the table and there's a tube on an overhead crane. So RF table, the image receptor is typically an image intensifying tube. Uh, newer systems replace the image intensifying tube with a flat panel fluoro detector. Um, considered a primary barrier. So the detector, which is intercepting the radiation, is your primary barrier. The lead curtain drape on the front of the spot um, device is to lower exposure to the operator. So if you're in there with a the radiologist, make sure the lead curtain is on and, if possible, and stand behind the radiologist. <laughs> you know me, I always stand behind him. So you can see your curtain right here on and your curtain is off here. So it's hard when the table's an upright because the curtain hangs. Um, and if you're doing a sterile procedure, you gotta take that off so that you can um, uh, get to the patient without contaminating the field. So here we have our traditional unit. So we have your uh, flat panel here and the tube is under the table, and then we have a ceiling mounted x-ray tube here. This is another over the head, over um, head tube. So here's the tube, and you have a flat panel detector here in the table. So these are the new latest greatest. These are very, very cool, um, state of the art, and you don't see much of them, but you will in the years to come. As we start replacing all of our RNF rooms, this is what they're going to. Really sleek, a lot easier, more compact and smart technology, which we really like. So when we're working in interventional, we typically have a C-arm system. Um, a lot of them have a biplane system, which is two C-arms, and they work in conjunction with each other. So we can do AP and lateral at the same time, which is really, really great for the patient because it reduces the amount of um, dose to the patient. And um, I don't know how much it reduces um, dose as far as shooting AP and lateral at the same time because you're still shooting AP and lateral but it reduces dose in the sense of runs so when we're injecting contrast into a patient we have to do it two three times to see the two different well minimum of two to see it in the AP and in the lateral this does one contrast injection we can shoot it both in the AP and the lateral which is really really cool so we use it for in interventional suites and cardiac interventional suites um, so it has the x-ray tube and the image receptor. So you have your x-ray tube right here. Here's your flat panel detector. Mobile x-ray. So um, we use mobile all over the hospital, as you know. It's motorized, which is really nice. They're very, very heavy, so don't run over your feet. Um, so it's similar to a fixed unit. Designs are compact and user-friendly. So you have to make sure that you have enough power to do your study. So check your battery before you leave. You don't want that thing to run out of battery. Trust me, it weighs a few thousand pounds and you're not gonna be able to move it if you're out of power. So um, we have a exposure cord where we can stand as far away from the unit as we can to take the exposure. Um, a lot of people are going to a a DR plate which is great um, a lot of them have a cord like this one um, we're going to a battery technology the one thing that you need to be careful of is make sure that your battery has enough power or enough to be able to finish your portable runs if not bring a backup battery because you do not want to run out of battery while you're out on your run alright so we use C-arm in fluoro and interventional um, the image receptor and the tube is at a fixed distance, so there's nothing you can do to change that. So the receptors um, vary from 6 inches to 12 inches in diameter, depending on the magnification that you're looking for and the detail. So newer systems use the flat panel detector technology. 
Um, they also have you know limited power based on what you're doing. Video monitors and computers for digital enhancement of images are included in the monitor cart. So you're going to have a separate, let me show you. So here you have your C-arm and then you have your um, display screen. So you always want to turn these towards the doctor so that they can see exactly what they're doing, which is great. Okay, so in conclusion, the highest diagnostic yield and efficacy of images are constant goals. Radiographic equipment has varying designs, but may uh, many common features. Receptor technology will continue to evolve into the digital world. Equipment design will incorporate digital detectors and user friend and user friendliness. I like that word. The basic principles of X-ray production and image quality remain the same even in the digital world. So protect your patients. High KV, uh, KVPs, low mass. Um, keep your distance as far as you can to help protect patients. All right, that sums it all up.